Hola, 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 buenas tardes, los frikis de Hunter Cordos. And you probably know why I'm using that particular language to introduce this video. Four months into its existence, the game is getting a whole series of DLCs to match the grand campaign of the original. It's the Axis Operations DLCs, and we already see how they're going into uncharted waters for this series, because Panzer Corps 1 hardly ever ventured into the period before World War II and both of the announced and, well, already released DLCs handle exactly that. And our fare for today will be the Spanish Civil War, which unfortunately is rather unknown outside Spain, where it's one of the biggest wars the country has ever fought, and definitely the biggest conflict of the 20th century for Spain, because it was neutral in both the world wars, and so the Spanish Civil War is often overlooked and overshadowed by the bigger European conflicts of the period. Period, and you can see that in video games, but it was a big war. Hundreds of thousands of people participated in it, and hundreds of thousands of people died in it. And its consequences are still resonating in Spain's culture and politics today. Not least in the fact that Spain is a monarchy and not a republic, so spoiling the outcome there. And it was a really interesting conflict in and of itself, being effectively a proxy war for the buzzing dictatorships of Europe, for the Soviet Union, for Germany and Italy, and many people believe, rightfully so, I think, that the Spanish Civil War was the grand rehearsal for World War II. Now on to the DLC. As made obvious by the name of the DLC, Axis Operations, Spanish Civil War, we are playing as the Condor Legion, the German quote-unquote volunteer troops, in conjunction with the CTV, the Italian Volunteer Corps in Spain, and the Nationalist Rebels, which we are supposed to help and support. And I believe that the developers have managed to strike a really interesting balance between these three allied factions. You are playing as the Germans, but it's 1936, You've got no infantry, your tanks are crap, your armoured cars are crap, your fighters are complete rubbish, and don't get me started on the anti-tanks and the anti-airs, alright? Which means that you have to rely on buying auxiliary troops for your missions, which in this case means Italians, and Italian infantry, which is decent, and Italian fighters, which are really cheap and really good. Now, the nationalist Spanish troops are slightly more interesting because they have lots of really good infantry, but you can't control them directly. You have to issue orders to them to attack, to defend, or to hold, and the AI will manage as well as it can manage. So you've got this interesting interplay between what you have always and what you get experience for, what you buy and have to mind your prestige for, and what you have to look out for and support but can't directly control, making this one of the most charming and refreshing and interesting aspects of the new DLC. Now let's talk a bit about my initial settings for this campaign and finally get to the mission, shall we? For these videos I'm playing the medium general level difficulty with the race against time setting on because I find the turn limits to be a bit generous in this game and the DLC is no exception. And as for commander traits, I have selected no overstrength to get some more trait points and I generally don't like overstrength in these games. And I'd like to point out the auxiliary force trait because it gives you much more access to the Italian troops and if you've got enough of prestige you actually can buy more of them which is very useful, especially in the early stages of the DLC campaign, which we'll talk about today. The developers also recommend taking the trophies of war traits, and I confirm that it would be really useful, because you have to rely on capturing enemy vehicles and then using them in battle. The Republicans have much better Soviet tanks and armored cars, so keep that in mind, and trophies of war might be a good idea too. And now, the missions. And so, the coup has started, and our first mission is going to be a very easy romp towards Seville, which is kind of weird, because Seville should be already occupied by the Spanish troops, which were successful in taking it over. And it was, for a long time, the biggest Spanish cities that the Nationalists held. Anyway, you are supposed to transport your African troops to the Iberian Peninsula, take over Cadiz, and advance towards Seville. You are warned about the Republican Navy, and avoiding it, 
it is rather easy. It only means that your Condor Legion troops will be able to cross the straits on boats and you'll have to transport your infantry in planes. That's the only thing. There will be a half-hearted counterattack coming from the northeast once you take the Seville airfield, but it's really easy to repel. Just remember that you don't have to take over the entire map. It's impossible. There is also a little secret hidden on the map. If you look at the eastern portion of that grayed out area, you'll see the Gibraltar and you can actually send one of your infantry troops in a boat to take it over. Make sure you avoid the Republican fleet and you will be rewarded with wonderful 203 millimeter Soviet howitzers. Good luck. The Anticara mission is the first to really show what battles in the Spanish Civil War DLC are really like. You get access to Italian troops and from this point on you can throw your fighters away into reserve and bring out the brilliant Italian biplanes which are extremely cheap with 40 prestige a pop and you've got the Spanish nationalist troops which you can indirectly control and control you'll have to send them to attack on turn one and make sure you support them with enough artillery they will need it use your mobile forces your tanks your armored cars your uh, motorized Italian infantry to outflank the hills in the west and then Antequera remember that the defenders have water and mountains in the south and can be easily encircled in the same Area. Once you take over Antikera, the bonus objectives are a no-brainer. It's really easy to destroy the battleship. You are given plenty of strategic bombers to do that. Don't bother trying to break through the defensive lines in the east and the south. You're not supposed to do that. And make sure you get the secret in one of the villages up north. Do you get more Soviet artillery there, you might ask? Damn right you do. More of 203mm howitzers plus... 122 millimeter uh, howitzers. So enjoy those as well. Alright folks, the briefing and the structure of this mission has perplexed me somewhat because we have the city of Badajoz, or if you wish you could call it Daddy Joe's, it's a secondary objective and it's called, it's like one of the things you could do if you really liked it. There is a Republican base out there, but it doesn't matter so much, even though the Battle of Badajoz was one of the major battles of early Spanish Civil War. The city is right on the border with Portugal, and if you look at the map of the time, you'll see that it's essentially the only thing that separates the southern areas controlled by the nationalists and the northern areas that they control. So it was important strategically and it was a major economic center. So it looks slightly weird and a bit amusing that it was relegated to the secondary objective status. So there's that. Another thing that this mission is interested for is that it's probably the first relatively hard mission in this campaign. Plus, this is the first time you can use your commendation points. I've been talking about the secondary objectives, but what you get for it. And what you get for it is what the developers have decided to introduce instead of the marginal and decisive victories, you get commendation points for every secondary objective that you fulfill. And occasionally, you will be able to use those commendation points as currency. And Merida is the first mission where you can do it. You can spend three points and get a bunch of Trubia tanks, which are Spanish, essentially Fiat 17, faster, better armored versions, and UNL 35, which are armored cars, essentially Spanish versions of the Soviet BA-20. Both of these units are by far better than what you have normally, so definitely Definitely go for them. As for strategy, send your nationalist troops forward right away and make sure you support them enough. They're quite powerful, but they can get stuck next to the river. I've seen it happen in Merida in the eastern objective where the AI simply didn't see any window of opportunity to attack those well-entrenched troops. So you need to send artillery or air support, something to help them out, prevent them from sticking around there. 
also beef up your Italian auxiliary troops. You've got some, but there will be a Republican counterattack in there. So I suggest that you wait a little bit, destroy the attackers, and then advance towards Badajoz. Which is, I must point out, the most difficult objective in this mission. My suggestion is to go straight to Merida and clear the area around it. And once you have taken Merida and the objective east of it, split your forces, send your tanks and some of your artillery, especially your long-range artillery, to Cáceres and send the rest to Badajoz. Expect heavy resistance there. Don't try to destroy the forts in there. It's way too powerful for your troops. But make sure you've got enough artillery to squeeze out all of that infantry out of the city. We have reached the old Spanish capital of Toledo in an effort to relieve those besieged in Alcázar de Toledo, which is a force located on the hill inside the city. These people have been holding out for two months since the beginning of the rebellion and haven't surrendered, so let's help them out. In this mission, you'll have to separate your troops, and the briefing suggests that you send your infantry towards the south with Poland. Polan and Nambroca, and send your mobile troops along the northern route, which is flatter and easier to deal with. Generally, it's true, but keep in mind that Nambroca is the most difficult objective in this mission. There's more resistance in the south, the terrain is much more difficult, so make sure you have all of your artillery supporting you there. Afterwards, you'll be able to move your troops, but at first, definitely, while you're clearing Poland, while you're clearing Nambroca, definitely use all of your artillery down south. Your tanks will manage in the north for the time being. However, once you have taken Nambroca, you should send at least one artillery piece towards Algodor, which is the easternmost objective. The problem here is that you will not be able to use your air support to, well, soften those defenders up. The enemy anti-air guns are way too strong there, so you simply won't be able to efficiently bomb them. In all of my playthroughs of this mission, I've seen that the nationalist infantry is quite capable of taking that objective. However, they need that little boost from your artillery. Oh, and that protect the governor objective is extremely easy. I have literally never seen him die, so don't really worry about it. After four months of intensive fighting, the Nationalists are finally approaching their coveted goal, the capital city of Madrid. Four months into a war that started in July, so it's November, and this is the first mission where you will encounter rain. Yes, sometimes it does rain on a plane in Spain, so you might want to make some adjustments in terms of your aerial strategy. Otherwise, it's worth remembering that the Nationalists actually failed to take Madrid, and the DLC reflects that, so if this is a a bit of an offensive and defensive scenario. Remember that you only have to take five victory objectives. So let the Nationalist infantry take over Alcornon and the initial objectives in the hills, but don't forget that once you take Retamares and Campamento, you don't really have to go anywhere beyond that. Moreover, the first Republican counterattack will trigger there, so don't rush. Once it's dead, you might try to take over the other objectives, but it's not that important. You don't need to do it. However, the Republicans will throw lots of tanks at you, and the position next to the river is excellent for capturing them, for making them surrender. So you should look into that opportunity, and if you're comfortable with this mission, definitely go for it. Otherwise, stay at Retamares and Campamento and weather the storm. Oh, and this is another opportunity for you to use your commendation points. This time you can buy the wonderful Berdeja tank, which I urge you get because First of all, it's hands down the best tank on the battlefield at this point. Also, it's the first unit of the new gift type that you'll see in this campaign, meaning that you can freely reinforce this particular unit, but you can't buy any more units of this type.
Mission 6 meets us with snow and interesting objectives. Let me first point out that Las Rozas, the objective in the north, is an actual location in today's Madrid, and it's a sparse forest typical of Spain, littered with bunkers of the time, so it was a place of heavy fighting. Otherwise, I found this mission to be rather easy, but you have to be methodical about it. You've got plenty of time to release those prisoners to take over those objectives and everything, but you have to be careful because the Republicans will try to counterattack. As soon as you take Las Rothas, and as soon as you take over that westernmost objective, that airfield, there will be two counterattacks during this mission for each of those objectives. Keep that in mind and leave defenders there. Otherwise, proceed as normal, but make judicious use of your bombers, because at one point there will become fire brigades helping you repel those counteroffensives. Artillery, use it to support your main thrust towards the Republican prison. Getting the prisoner out is really easy. By the end of the mission, all of the Republican Air Force will be soundly defeated. It'll be just a matter of a couple of turns to get the prisoners to the rescue zone. And this is it. The 1936 campaign is over, and despite a wonky start, the Nationalist forces have managed to secure powerful allies and a big chunk of Spain. So let's see what awaits us in 1937. One thing I can promise, the planes will be much better. Alright, thank you for listening and watching the next video, the next part of the DLC campaign will come next week, so if you like this stuff, definitely subscribe. And now a little joke to end the video. What did Oberleutnant Wagner say when he left the bar? I'm very drunk. No! <laughs> <laughs>